it's an unusual ex kind of extension there. Most of the guys have extensions now with which screw into the back of the queue. He seems to have a sort of one that sort of plugs over the queue or something. Yeah, yeah. That's what you mean. Yeah. Like an olden day original extension. Okay, we've got we've got that. It's kind of a very standard kind of safety shot that you see come up a lot. Just going to try and get the the line of the cue ball to be running into that six ball, so that even if you misjudge the pace slightly, you're still likely to get a hook out of it. So the one cushion and the three cushion available here. I, I favor the three cushion myself. Or I could be going two as well. There's a, several up. Look, looks from, I think he's going, I think he's going two. No, he's going three. No idea what he did there. I think there. he was Maybe. going one. I think he was going end. one, right? Yeah. OK. That's a great kick as well. Wonderful kick shot. Kick and stick there from Copin. So what's the, what's the secret to getting the, that cue ball to stick? High ball. You played that on the top of the cue ball. A lot of people think you should aim on a low ball, but it's a high ball, and then that transfers onto the object ball and helps the cue ball stick. You've got to hit it full, though. Even when you're going off two cushions, it doesn't reverse back again? No, I mean, obviously... It depends where the object ball is, I suppose. Wow, well, look at this. Oh, wow. The Sato nice. going airborne, fires it in. I know the Asian players are probably a little bit more adept with a jump cure. I'd love, love to hit this see. full. If he can hit it full, he'll leave the cue ball. Oh, I was just about to say that's a possible thing. Oh, look at how he's come out. Yeah, that was... You could see the shins on the pocket there when you got that really close-up angle. So the pockets would be 4.5 inches normally when the when the tables are delivered, but the table, uh, put the, the the guy doing the the reclothing there has added some little rubber shins onto the edges of the pockets to bring them down to 4.1 to make the game a little bit more entertaining. If these pockets were standard, that nine ball would have been gone by now. We'd have been onto an X rack. The kick shot, he was trying to hit full again. If he'd have hit the one ball full, cue ball would have stayed around the bottom and hopefully get the one up table. So, yeah, he's got to make contact with this, otherwise it's a pretty easy rack for Copenhagen to finish off. Soft draw. Oh dear. Wasn't soft enough. And he's moved the four away. It's interesting to see if he'll play the combo. Directly from the one, you mean? He's not yeah. even looked at it, but why wouldn't he shoot it? Yeah, actually, he could put the, the cue ball back in the top cushion there. Right? Because Easy. now he has to get good position on the two. I'm not saying he won't, but. Well. Why wouldn't you shoot the combo? Yeah. Why would you risk getting position? I think oh, maybe oh, he just oh, didn't no. spot the combo. I think the four ball was in the was in the way if he did spot it. Maybe he just didn't know it'd been moved, but he could have just put the cue ball behind the one. That's the one he's gone for. Uh, I think he wanted to come across more than that, but uh he could just do a little draw shot and have the seven in the middle perhaps. Ideally he would have come across closer to that right hand side cushion and giving himself a, a two railer into the seven on the same pocket. But since he's come a bit short, he might play for the seven in the middle. See the players mixing up using the closed bridge and, and the open bridge. Very rarely does a player use exclusively only a closed bridge or an open bridge. So it's, they seem to choose open or closed depending on the shot. Something again you never see in snooker. Do you ever see a snooker player play with the, playing with a closed bridge? 
Uh, often wondered why, but. A loop bridge. Yeah, I call it a closed bridge yeah, when, when you have your finger. You call, you call it a call loop it? bridge. Yeah. yeah, you call it a closed bridge. Yeah, right, yeah I've, I've never heard, heard of loop bridge. Yeah, You're joking. Yeah. Well, that's wow. what they call it over here, closed bridge. Yeah. Right, loop bridge we call it. I'm okay. thinking close bridge, what's that? Yeah, right. Right. but I mean, loop bridge kind of makes more sense, if, but uh, yeah. I mean, because, yeah, it gives you more, it doesn't allow the, the shaft to wobble around, right? Yeah, I think on power shots you see it a lot. SVB, one of the most powerful cueists in the game, obviously uses the loop bridge. From the way he's cueing the ball. Yeah, I'm surprised about that. I mean, I would have been going outside and two rails. Just the way he was cueing it looked like he was, it was a very speed sensitive decision. And he hasn't taken advantage of having a shot on the one after the break. Uh, that's worrying signs. Of yeah, I was, I was watching his action with the bridge because over the years, Pool players' actions have been a little bit questionable, but his action looked okay. So I didn't expect a poor positional shot to come from there. Kicking off the back rail, this shot can go wrong more times than it goes right. Because it's so hard to hit where he wanted. Mm, good call, yeah. Yeah. He was trying to find the two on the back rail, on the bottom rail, wasn't he? So just hit it a bit too much on the left. Yeah, we saw when, when Copen Yi checked that the ball earlier on to come up for the two, he also underhits it. I just think that because these cushions are quite grippy, um, that when you when you do check off the cushion, you need you need to put a little bit more than you think on it. Um, where maybe we got caught out on that, and which just led to that kick error and let Copeny back in and the way he's playing you don't see him making a mistake here and then putting a break and run in and that would put Nasato into a very uncomfortable position might be going a couple of rails on this oh he's gone for the bank shot oh well wouldn't have, wouldn't have seen that excellent it's not going to be easy but unless he does, or he may be playing up into the top and then just pushing the cue ball across the position, but the, the, the nine and the seven's there. So, oh, ah, a chance. Oh, yeah, Masato. first glimmer of hope for Masato. It's the first ball he's missed, right, Carl, in the match. Yes, it is. is just what he needed and in an alternate break format when you can win a rack on your opponent's break it's really the only way you're going to come back into a match because if he wins this rack he has got the break next so from 8-3 we could be looking at an 8-5 match due to going in the pocket thick has caused him all sorts of trouble it's amazing how much that one one or two centimeters can make so much of a difference sometimes. He's got, of course, he's got that six inch extension I mentioned, so he's used to playing this shot with the weight of the cue. That's why they have it on there. So now he's, oh, he's done well out of that, but he still has a tricky shot. So I don't like these kind of shots because you can get double kisses if you don't hit it sweet. And if he hits it sweet, the four's going away from the pocket unless it squeezes past the five, of course. It may squeeze past the five. Oh. So he's tried to hit, catch it thick to avoid the four running away on him, and... Look at this pot's in the side. He's got to watch the scratch in the opposite middle. Yeah, look where the cue ball going. That's what worried him. That's why he played it a little bit tentative. He's left a bank shot on there. I don't think we'll be seeing Cole turn down this bank shot. 
because it affords easy position to the two ball. Straight in the middle. Cue ball comes round and dresses up with a shot on the two. He's going to navigate position to get on the three. If he does that, this could be the end for that man right there. He says going high for the three. I wondered if he might go below the nine, but that was too iffy. He might end up too thin on the three, so he's gone two rails. Nicely controlled speed there. Oh, oh, that was a little risky. <laughs> a scratch at the head there. I think he was trying to bump it. Yeah, must have just potted the ball in the wrong side of the pocket. So these guys always looking for minimal movement of the, of the cue ball. Uh, even if it means leaving themselves slightly longer shot, they're just going to do that. Uh, whereas your amateur players, players in the club, you'll see them whacking the ball with spin and trying to get themselves cue ball in hand position every time. These guys are so confident on the long shots. And that's it, Coping Yee, in the end, a very comfortable winner indeed. Wow, that went quick, yeah.